Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, asteroid collision. All right, so in this question, we're given an array asteroids of integers representing asteroids in a single row. For each asteroid, the absolute value represents its size and the sign represents the direction it's moving in. So the positive sign means that it's moving to the right and the negative sign means it's moving to the left. All right, so each asteroid moves at the same speed. All right, so find out the state of the asteroid after all collisions. If two asteroids meet, the smaller one will always explode. If both are the same size, then both of them are going to explode. And two asteroids moving in the same direction will never meet. All right, so this question might be a little bit confusing when you just read the question as it is, but it's pretty simple once you actually try to visualize it. So let's just look at this example. So we have 5, 10, negative 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize how this looks like. So over here, uh, we're going to look at this uh, first example, 5, 10, negative 5. So what do each of these numbers represent? So each number represents a single asteroid. So over here, it's telling us we have an asteroid which has a size of 5. So I'm just going to draw it, and we have an asteroid with a size of 5. Then over here, we have an asteroid of size 10. So I'll just draw it a little bit bigger, so that's 10. And again, so we're always going to take the absolute value for finding out the size. So in this case, the, uh, the size is going to be 5 again. So these are the three asteroids that we have, uh, 5, 5, and 10. These two are supposed to be the same size, by the way. Okay, so now the question is, what direction are they going to be moving? So this one over here is positive. So if something is positive, it moves to the right. So this is going to move to the right. Perfect. And uh, this is also positive, so it also moves to the right. But 5 over here is actually negative. So what's going to happen is that this is going to move to the left. Now, this is how our asteroids look like currently. But the question is, what happens after they move and collide? So let's take a quick look at what's going to happen. So let's say everything moves by one step right now. So 5 is going to move to the right by 1, 10 moves to the right by 1, and 5 moves to the left by 1. And when this happens, there's going to be a collision between 10 and 5. And when that happens, the smaller number or asteroid is going to get destroyed. So this over here is going to get destroyed and the 10 is going to remain as it is. But at the same time, let's just say it keeps going on and on. So 10 keeps moving to the right, 5 keeps moving to the right, but they will never collide since the 10 is one step ahead of the 5. So in this case, our output is actually going to be 5 comma 10. Since the negative 5 collides with the 10 and it explodes since 10 is greater than 5. So let's take a quick look at that and our answer is correct. So I'll just go through two more examples real quickly. So let's say we have 8. So this is 8 and this is negative 8. Uh, or I'll just write it as 8. The only difference is direction. So this moves to the right, this moves to the left. So what is going to happen? Well, obviously they're going to end up colliding and they're going to break. So now, and the, the result for this is just going to be an empty area. But now what I'm going to do, let's just change it up. And instead of doing 8 comma negative 8, let's do negative 8 comma 8. So when you do negative 8 comma 8, what's going to happen is the asteroid size is going to stay the same, but the direction changes. So this moves to the left and this moves to the right. So they are never going to actually intersect. And in that case, we're never actually going to have any sort of clash. So that is what we want to understand over here. The fact that when we have a negative number first, followed by a positive number, we're never going to have a collision because the negative number is going to infinitely go to the left and the positive number is going to infinitely go to the right. But when we can, and we can have a collision when we first have a positive number over here. So we first have a positive number and then have a negative number. And what that tells us is that we're moving to the right uh, in the positive direction and in the negative, we're going to go to the left. And at some point, there is going to be a collision. And just to kind of go over that one more time, uh, real quickly, this is one example. So over here, we have both of these are negative. So they both keep going to the left, and these two keep going to the right. So they're never going to intersect. So then the answer to this is going to be exactly the same as it is, since nothing is going to change. So negative 1, comma, neg negative 2, comma, negative 1, comma, 1, comma, 2, and that is exactly what our answer is. All right, so hopefully you understand the question, but now we want to understand how can we actually solve this. So let's go back to the first observation we made. And that's the fact that we first have a negative number and then a positive number. They're never going to collide. But when we have a positive number followed by some sort of negative number, then in that case, we are going to have a collision. 
And in order to solve this question, we're actually going to be using a stack. So instead of actually uh, drawing it out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain as we're writing the code. And I think it's a lot easier to understand that way as well. All right, so let's start off with the code part of this question. And like I said earlier, we're going to be using a stack. So to do this, I'm going to be using a list or an empty list called res. And this over here is going to act as our stack. And this actually is also going to be what we end up outputting as our answer. Okay, so what exactly is the goal of res over here? So the goal is to show all the asteroids and their magnitudes and values after certain collisions have happened. So we want to get rid of the collisions. That's our main goal, getting rid of the collisions and keeping everything which has not been collided or will not be collided, right? So that's the entire goal of this. And to do that, we're actually going to iterate through this. So to do that, let's just do for x in asteroids. Perfect. So now we have each of our asteroids inside of our uh, for loop over here. So like I said earlier, we want to get rid of everything which ends up colliding. So that really ends up, uh, gives us two cases. So uh, that we need to ask ourselves the question, does our asteroid actually end up colliding? So in order to kind of figure out whether it ends up colliding, we're going to go inside of this while loop. And, and the purpose of doing so is not going to make sense right now, but I'm sure as we go through it, it'll be make a lot more sense. Okay, so now the goal here is if I go inside of this while loop, whatever happens over here means that there is a possibility of colliding, okay? So if I go inside of this while loop, there means that there is some sort of possibility of it to collide, okay? So in order to, before we even enter this, we want to check what can we filter out so not everything goes inside the while loop. Because when, once we enter it, it means that there is a possibility of colliding. So one of the things is if our result list over here is empty. So if our result list over here is actually empty, then in that case, what we're going to do is we're just going to append whatever asteroid we're on into our results. Now over there, by appending it, we have one of two possibilities. We could have a negative asteroid instead of results or a positive asteroid. Now, if there is a positive asteroid, we're going to let it be as it is. And what's going to happen is when a negative asteroid comes along, we're going to destroy those positive asteroids as we go through them. Okay. And it'll make more sense since we, as we go down this over here. So one of our conditions is that we must have a results array, which is not empty. So to do that, we can just do while length of result. So it's just going to check while the length of result is not zero, we're going to go inside of this while loop. All right, so that's going to be for one of our conditions. Now let's go over to the second condition. Now the purpose of this while loop is there is a possibility of colliding. And as I kind of spoke earlier, we're going to be adding the positive values no matter what. And instead, what we're going to be doing is when a negative value comes, we're going to remove the positive values from the result. So that's what we're looking for over here. We're checking if the current asteroid that we're on is it's negative. If it's negative, then in that case, we might be removing the positive asteroids inside of results and have a collision and clean up whatever asteroids get uh, end up getting destroyed. So over here, we're going to check and we want x to be a negative value. So is x less than zero? So that's one of our conditions. And by the ending of this, so once we go through these two conditions, that means that results is not empty and we have a negative value for the current asteroid, the x value. Now, our last condition is we're going to go to the top of our stack. In other words, we're just going to get the last element. And to do that, we just go to negative one. Index negative one is going to give us the very last index. What we're going to check for is we want the last element to be positive. So how does this make sense? So again, like I said earlier, when we go inside of this Y loop, we have a negative asteroid and it's going to go through the asteroids inside of res. And if it's positive, it's going to end up colliding with them and destroying it or whatever uh, might be happening. So in this case, for us to actually have any sort of collision, the last value has to be positive. Now, if this last value was actually negative, what that what that's basically telling us is that we're not going to be having any collisions. Even the, re, uh, the x value, the current asteroid we're on, is negative. Everything before it is also negative. So in that case, we're not going to be having any sort of collisions. Okay, so this over here is the three statements or conditions that we have. And once we go inside of this while loop, we're going to have a few conditions that we want to look for. So over here, the, there's going to be a collision. Now, the factor that we want to consider is what is actually going to end up breaking. 
So the one case which we have is when the current x value, so the current asteroid we're on, and this value over here, so the top of our results uh, list, are both the same. So in that case, if they're both the same in terms of magnitude, so if the absolute value of both of them is the same, then in that case, that means that when they collide, they're both going to end up breaking. So that's what we're going to check for. So over here, we're going to check if the current value we're on. So if the top of our stack, so that's res negative one, and we're going to subtract that with the absolute value of whatever x we're on. Actually, in other words, we know for a fact x is negative. So in simple words, we could actually just do plus x. And if that value is equal to zero, that means that they have the same magnitude. And in that case, what's going to happen is both of them are going to end up destroying. X is going to destroy, the x is going to get destroyed, and the very, and the top of our stack is also going to get destroyed. So first, let's remove whatever is in the top of our stack. And after this, what we're going to do is we're going to break out of our while statement. We're done. And by breaking out, what's going to happen is we're not going to be appending the current x value to our results. So in that case, they're both going to be considered as broken. So that's one of our conditions. Another condition is when the magnitude of the x value over here is smaller than the top of our stack. Again, I'm always talking about the magnitude over here. So let's check that real quickly. So if the absolute value of x is less than res negative 1, then in that case, we know that what's going to happen is that the incoming asteroid is actually going to end up getting destroyed. We can just break out of this. And the reason we can just directly break out of this is because the incoming asteroid, which is negative, is going to end up breaking. And the positive asteroid, which is already instead of res, is not going to get affected. So by breaking out, we're not going to be adding it to our results. We're not going to be adding x to our results. So in simple words, that means that it's broken. And one more thing, we want to change this to an else if. Okay. And finally, we have one last condition. Now, what does this condition mean? So in this case, the absolute value of x is going to be greater than the top of our stack. So when that happens, that means that the current value inside of our stack is going to end up getting destroyed. So to uh, destroy it, we're going to do res.pop. But now what we want to consider is that the negative asteroid is not broken yet only the smaller asteroid gets broken. The negative asteroid, in this case, which is bigger, is not broken. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to continue inside of our while loop. So in that case, what's going to happen is we're going to go back over here and we're going to continue with whatever steps that we have. And we're going to keep going inside of this while loop until this bigger asteroid, the bigger negative asteroid, ends up destroying everything. So that could be one condition. So if our bigger negative asteroid destroys all of the smaller positive asteroids instead of res, then in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to add that to our result. So that's one condition. And the other condition is there might be some point where it might end up stopping. So that's going to be another condition. So that's going to be it for the while loop. So now we're going to have an else statement. And in this else statement, all that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding res.append and we're going to be adding the current asteroid that we're on. So this could refer to the positive asteroids or it could refer to the negative asteroids which made its way all the way back to the beginning. So res.append x. Okay, and this should be it for our solution. So let's go outside of our for loop and we're going to end up returning the result. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.